I had met my editor, Ruth McCabe, at Pietro's restaurant. We were going over my new book with Don Shore, the art director. No. No, it's wrong. I don't know why, but it's wrong. You're the author. I thought it was fine when Don brought it into my office this afternoon. You really can't tell from the rough sketch, Ray. Jeremy Blake's doing a beautiful job on the illustration. Now, when the lettering's in properly... No, it's the mood that's wrong. It's too menacing. Jill doesn't know the first time that Ricky meets her that he's been paid to kill her. She's got a point there. It does have a whodunit feeling. Well, I thought Doc Stranger was a whodunit. No. No, it's a suspense story, you might call it. A gunman is hired to kill a girl, and then he falls in love with her. And when he tries to stop the accidental death that he's planned for her, he can't. He's planned it too well. Does Doc Stranger really click with you? Sure it does. That's why we picked it for the book. No, but I'm thinking about the girl, Jill. Would she fall in love with Ricky that quickly? Especially when she's got a nice steady bow like George. Well, it's been known to happen. Young girl, steady bow, too steady maybe. And an exciting stranger comes along. And... Yes, but not Jill. She's young, yes, but she's loyal. She's warm. And I can tell you the way she walks, how she speaks, the color of her eyes. The... What's the matter, Ray? That girl. Where'd you take her for? That girl. Didn't you see her? What girl? Who was she? Friend of yours? I don't know. I thought I knew her. I must have forgotten this. Jill Andrews. Well, that's the name of your girl in Dark Stranger. Then you knew her. I'm not sure. John Wilson Bad Agency. She's a professional model. So that's it. Now it's seen a name and face in a magazine, use them unconsciously. Andrews? And you brought my pictures. I knew you would. How did you know I would? I don't know. I just knew you would. Won't you come in and sit down? Thank you. Wasn't I silly running away from you the way I did tonight? I don't say that women swoon at my approach, but you bolted as if the devil were after you. When I turned around, I got the strangest feeling. As if... as if you had some power over me. As if you could destroy me if you wanted to. <laughs> Why, well, I, I guess we're even. I had some pretty odd notions about you, too, until I... until I found these pictures of you. These are my first professional pictures. I'd have hated to have lost them. Your first professional pictures? She must have done some modeling before. No, I just signed with John Wilson Baird. These were test pictures. Well, then you've been living in the village for some time. 
Maybe I met you at a party somewhere. Oh, no. I just came to New York in June. Before that, I lived all my life in Kansas. My Jill had come to New York on the 1st of June. My Jill had come from Kansas. Suppose it were true. Suppose she was my Jill. There was one way to find out. What's the name of your hometown, Jill? What's the name of your hometown, Jill? She couldn't hear me. Why? Because I hadn't written in my story the town she'd come from. I asked her another question, one she could answer, if she were my Jill. Are you alone here in the city, Jill? No, I have George. George? Mm, George Graves, my fiancé. We've been engaged ever since... Well, ever since I can remember. He works for the telephone company. He's an engineer. Yes, I know. How could you know? Well, uh, his name just sounds like an engineer, that's all. Do you love him, Jill? Of course I love him. Oh, I wouldn't say he's, he's exactly the romantic type. And Well, I never daydreamed about an engineer with sandy hair and freckles sweeping me off my feet, but, well... But George is nice and steady, is that it? That's exactly how I describe him. And the man you did daydream about... What was he like, Jill? Tall and a little mysterious? You're beginning to frighten me again. It's almost as if you could touch the thoughts in my mind. How could I do that? I don't know. I don't know, but I want you to go. Well, Jill. Please. Must I call someone? No. You don't have to call anyone. Not even George. But I'll be seeing you again, Jill, soon. Three days later, the book had gone to the printer. I arrived home to find that Ruth had sent over the new book jacket for my approval. It hit me like a bomb. By some strange inversion of experience, Jill Andrews had escaped out of the pages of my book into real life. The two girls were the same. The destiny of one would be the destiny of the other. Because suddenly I remembered the ending I'd written for the Jill in the book. Death. Inescapable death. Listen, I've got to change the ending of Dark Stranger. I, I've just got to change it. I've got to keep Jill alive. Look, Ray, I admit you were right about the other revisions, but... Jill. Jill's got to live. Heaven's sakes, Ray. Where's your story if she lives? The power of it lies in the inability of even the murderer to save her when he wants to. Besides, it's too late. It went to the printers an hour after you left it with me. Ray... Ray, you still there? Hello. Yeah, this is Don. Oh, Ray. Don. If you're running the book through the presses tonight, stop it. I'll be right over. I've got to change the end of the story. Just the last two pages. Well, does Ruth know about this? Well, I, I spoke with her a little while ago. Well, she didn't call me about it. It doesn't make any difference. The end of that story's got to be changed. Oh, come off it, Ray. Please, Don, please believe me. But I'm not the editor. Ruth is. And if she wants some changes, well, I'll say that they're made. But you've got to get her OK first, Ray. Well, then, then let me change just one name, Jill's name, just for legal protection. We'd have to redo every plate. Now, as for the legal aspect, forget it. 
Jill Andrews is a sympathetic character. They never sue. Now, if you knew a murderer named Ricky... Well, then you might have something to worry about. <laughs> you don't, do you? No. No, I don't. You've been working too hard, Ray. I've seen him like you before. You'll recover. Now, try and get some sleep. Good night. You know, I never should have gone out with you. George would never approve. We had to celebrate, didn't we? You got your first modeling job this morning. Yes, I spent most of the money on a pair of red shoes. I like them. George didn't, when I met him for lunch. No, I don't know what's come over George. He always was conservative back home. Now he, he seems so stuffy. We all changed, Jill. So suddenly, it hardly seems natural. Why did you do that? What? Squeeze my hand. Not that I mind it. You're not afraid of me anymore, are you, Jill? Afraid of you? I could never be afraid of you. Hmm. You're just as I pictured you. Pictured me? Sure. I have my daydreams too, you know. I must go. Not yet. May I see you again tomorrow night? Yes. Good night. Come in. Good morning. Oh, it's you. I'll be right with you. I've lost one of them again. What? My earring. Oh. Always losing an earring. I thought I dropped it around here someplace, but I guess not. I'll never be able to match it. Well, I've got a friend who's a jeweler. Maybe he can match it. Let me take it with me, huh? That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Would you like some coffee? I'd love some. Aren't you a little early for our date? Like about 12 hours? I just wanted to be sure you were all right. Everybody wants to be sure I'm all right. You should have heard George on the subject. He says I should be careful of strangers. That's silly. If I'm a model, I'm going to be meeting hundreds of new people every week. Maybe you should give it up. What? Don't you understand? George is right. You can't be too careful with strangers in a big town like this. That's what George says. He says I should be careful of you, too. Maybe I should. I don't even know your name. It's Ray. Ray Erickson. Oh, yes, I knew the Erickson part. I heard the waiter at the restaurant last night call you Mr. Erickson. Ray. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. I had to invent a name for you last night. George wanted to know who I'd been out with. <laughs> really? Who was I? Ricky. 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 She'd given me the name of the gunman in my book. The hired gunman who kills the girl he loves. Ricky. Where'd you get that name? I just made it up. Why are you staring at me like that? I've got to tell you. I've got to go away for a while. Out of town. How long? I don't know. I'll, I'll try to call you when I come back. Ray, what is it? What have I done? It's nothing. Nothing that you've done, Jill. Believe that. I have a feeling I'm never going to see you again. It's better this. 
this way, Jim. Believe me. The next few days were torment for me. I knew the only way to keep Jill alive was not to see her. I was like an animal, wounded, hunted, who runs from the one he loves because he knows he can bring her only death. the manager I was a friend of yours. I just came to say goodbye. I, I'm going home tomorrow. With George? Without George. You think I could marry George after meeting you? I don't want to hear about it. I'm busy. I've got work to do. Why do women have to make such a big emotional thing about saying goodbye? I love you, Ray. Don't say that. I do. These last few days have been awful for me. The past, it, it seems so hazy. My family, I can't even remember them anymore. It's as if I never existed before I came here. Jill, Jill, I'm no good for you. I don't care. I never loved anybody but you. It's as if I belonged to you. It's as if we were married. Married? There it was, the solution. If she were Jill Erickson, she wouldn't be Jill Andrews anymore. And then the ending I'd written could never happen. Jill, Jill, do you really feel that way? Do you really care about me that much? I do, I do. And we will be married, right away. We'll apply for the license tomorrow. We can be married by Thursday, by that time. The book will be out. Book? What's a book got to do with our being married? I'll tell you everything Thursday after we're married. Just trust me, Jill. I hadn't seen Jill since we applied for our license on Monday. I was afraid to see her while she was still Jill Andrews and I was Ricky. Now it was Thursday. She was to meet me at Pietro's, and we were to drive to White Plains and be married by a justice of the peace. But she was late. Joe. Joe, what's wrong? Why didn't you tell me you were a writer? You are, aren't you? Yes, I'm a writer. I know. I was lonely for you. Yesterday, I walked into a bookstore. I bought this. Jill. My first modeling job. I was posing for your book jacket, wasn't it? I didn't know. And the story. It was us. My name and how we looked and what had happened to us. Everything's the same. What are you going to do to me, Ray? Kill me? What? I'm not going to kill you. I love you, Ray. Jill, I'm a writer. I create with words. I write die on the typewriter and somebody dies. I write live and somebody lives. But I'm not somebody that you made up. Jill. 
How did you know my name that first night here at Pietro's? You called out to me, remember? How did you know? Because you thought it up for me. Did you give me these eyes and this face and this voice? If I go back, will there be anything there? Look at me, Ray. Jill, listen to me. You've got to listen. No. Jill, listen, please. No. Jill. 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 Nice to have you with us again. How long have I been here? Five weeks. Jill. She's dead, isn't she? That's all you've talked about for the past five weeks. Ray, there isn't any Jill. There never was. You don't know. If only I hadn't grabbed her in the street. I didn't want her to be hurt. Ray, a policeman saw it happen. There was no girl. Don and I saw it happen from the doorway at Pietro's. You and Don weren't there. Ray, we were. You were hit the night we met to show you the first sketch of the book jacket. You were acting strangely and said something about a girl and ran out into the street. Jill Andrews was just a girl in your story, Ray. But we were to be married. Check the marriage license bureau. Check the bad agency and, and, and the place where she lived. We have, Ray. All three. There's no record of her anywhere. Look. She posed for this. I asked Jeremy Blake. He didn't use a model. He took it from the description of Jill in your book. You'd been working awfully hard, Ray. Forget it. Concentrate on getting well. Jill's earring in the pocket of my coat. Are my clothes in that closet? I think they are. I'd like to see my jacket. Would you bring it to me, please? All right. Will it be there? It's got to be there. Ruth, I, I'm very tired. I understand. Get plenty of rest. I'll be back tomorrow. Thank you, Ruth. Jill, no logic in this world can ever take you from me. <laughs>